Greetings, everyone. Our team is Solar Focus from San Jacinto College in Pasadena, Texas. Our team uh, worked on designing a novel non-tracking fiber optic solar concentrator for use on extraterrestrial habitats. Our team members are Pablo Reyes, Ian Ebert, myself, Carl Mena, and Kevin Saldana. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Nathaniel Wiggins and our mentors are Christopher Mendel and Neil Jody. Today is going to talk about a solar concentrator and how it uses a Fresnel lens and a funnel lens to concentrate light towards a focal point and then be harnessed as solar energy. I feel this design has potential for the main reason that it has no moving parts and thus eliminating some of the problems encountered in space such as lunar dust. The spherical lens and to gain a basic structural and mathematical understanding of the Fresnel lens, I use Mathematica to code a two-dimensional model that transforms a spherical lens into a Fresnel lens. This model demonstrates how the lens reduces its thickness, which allows less light energy to be converted into heat energy. The Fresnel lens also increases the accuracy of the lens, although not shown in this model. When I started formulating the three-dimensional model using SOLIDWORKS, I used basic Fresnel equations to form each rib along the one meter long design. The design was made using a prism shape for each rib in, a, in the Fresnel lens. This allowed for a reduction in spherical aberration, which is the error in the light accuracy of the light onto its focal point. A research study on, on Fresnel lenses shows that the efficiency of the lens increases up to 325 prisms, after which it begins to decrease. The high number of prisms allows the collection area, as shown in the bottom figure, to decrease in size, ultimately increasing the accuracy of the design. The equations presented on the right-hand side are altered Fresnel equations, used to optimize the shape of each prism in our design. Equations one through five can be used to find the range of transmittance angles from each prism. This allows us to calculate what percentage of the light will hit the outer edge of the funnel lens. Equation six uses the variables calculated in equations one through five to calculate the total transmittance through each prism. This equation allows us to optimize the interior angles and shape to gain maximum transmittance in our Fresnel lens. The funnel lens is a vital component for the solar concentrator and requires a material that can withstand the extreme temperatures on the moon and simultaneously collect sunlight efficiently. For these demands to be met, we have established that the best material to be used is a transparent aluminum known as aluminum oxynitride or Alon. It is worth mentioning that Alon has an outstanding refractive index of 1.79. The refractive index of Alon makes it possible to capture sunlight and send off into an optic fiber cable through a process known as total internal reflection. Total internal reflection is possible if and only if the refractive index of the medium from which light is coming from is less than that of the medium it enters and if the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle. The critical angle is obtained using Snell's law and solving for the angle of medium 1. This slide shows a ray trace of how light entering the funnel would reflect internally and lead towards the back where it would then be fed into an optic fiber cable. And for that, we have Carl here to tell us more about it. My name is Carl Mena. My name is Carl Mena and I'm pursuing a mechanical engineering degree. And I oversaw the improvement of the optical fibers insulation. I decided to go with the MLI, which stands for multi-layer insulation. One of the advantages of the multi-layer insulation is that it can withstand temperatures that can reach 1000 Celsius, which in Fahrenheit is 1832. The multi-layer insulation is composed of multiple layers of thin reflective materials, and it's effective when it comes to reflecting graduation. The layers have in them, in them materials that have a high thermal conductivity, and because of the conductive materials, it is effective in the high vacuum environments. One of the things I believe will improve the multi-layer insulation is 
that if we add the beta clothing, which is a material that NASA has uh, used before on its projects uh, as an extra layer, if we add the beta clothing as an extra layer uh, to the MLI, uh, it would uh, do a better job in outer space due to the radiation being abundant in the, uh, the outer, outer space environment. Not to mention that the convection and conduction are literally non-existent. The multi-layer insulation functions like this by reducing the radiation heat by reflecting the radiant energy back towards the source of origin. Because some of the radiation can still get through, the process of adding multiple layers uh, by adding the beta clothes on the insulation, it will increase the effectiveness of the insulator, which means less radiation will be transferred. By using the multi-layer insulation and adding the beta clothing onto the optic fiber cable, uh, it would have a positive impact on the solar concentration and it will make it more effective in the outer space. Because of this, I believe that the optic fiber, once it's been insulated by the multi-layer, and adding beta clothing as one of the layers, it would uh, have more chance to withstand the harsh temperatures uh, that are present on the vacuum of uh, outer space, uh, making them last longer and being less prone to have difficulty or damages during its uh, work. Um, next, uh, Kevin Saldana with uh, Lunar Dust. Hello, my name is Hello. My name is Kevin Saldana, and I'm here to talk to you about lunar dust. Lunar dust has been a long time hindrance for many space missions, and it's one of the main obstacles many scientists and engineers have been trying to effectively overcome. One of the major problems that lunar dust causes is that its tiny particles can reach into the components of a motor and cause major damage, making these motors practically obsolete on the moon. The surface of the moon is filled with these tiny charged microparticles. Sending our solar concentrator without a proper way of dealing with the moon dust will render our device useless. To combat this, we have researched various ways to try and find a solution. The solution we felt best fit our design is to apply an electrodynamic dust shield that will repel the charged lunar dust from making, ever making contact with our device. This electrodynamic dust shield will be made of the material ambient tin oxide and will serve as our thin layer of coating to protect against the lunar dust. The reason we chose this to be our EDS coating is because it's excellent transparency while being highly conductive as well. To power this EDS, it will require around two to four watts to keep the shield running no matter the size, large or small. Some test samples have shown to remove about 98% of the lunar dust, which is very optimal. This right here is a diagram of the test done by researchers showing off the effectiveness of the EDS. The bottom picture displays of how the shield works by employing and electrostatic and dielectrophoric forces to move particles across the surface. This last page shows off an extra specific properties of intern oxide. And that's it. The image, on the, the image on the right hand side shows our base design. We decided to use aluminum as a material because it is both strong and lightweight. We further decrease the weight of our design by using honeycomb structure, which allows us to drastically reduce the weight while keeping its structural integrity. The parabolic mirrors on the inner edges allow us to increase the surface area of the light that we collect by reflecting more light onto the Fresnel lens in the center. The lens in the center of the image allow us to lock our Fresnel lens in place, allowing it to withstand winds and extraterrestrial habitats this opportunity and we today would like to extend a gratitude towards Professor Jody, Mr. Mandel, and Dr. Wiggins because if it wasn't for you guys we would have never gotten this opportunity.